Hi, this is Christian, and welcome back to NFL Updates Express, your weekly dose of NFL news. Coming your way, the season predictions video for 2021. We kick the predictions off with the AFC East division, and coming in first place, I have the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen should be an MVP candidate, and the Bills continue to grow. Next up, I have the New England Patriots, and I expect a bounce back season for Bill Belichick and Cam Newton and company. I feel like the Patriots, with their new two tight end set with John U. Smith and Hunter Henry, should have a solid season and get to double digit wins. In third place, I have the Miami Dolphins also going 10 and 7 and getting into the postseason, squeaking in as the seventh seed. I think Tua will take a step up. And with rookie wide receiver Jalen Waddell, this Dolphins team could be a sneaky good team once again. And finally, rounding out in fourth place is the New York Jets. And they still have a lot to work on, but I really like their rookie class. They have a great wide receiver in Elijah Moore. Of course, the quarterback they drafted, Zach Wilson, running back Michael Carter, and Elijah Vera Tucker, their guard, also drafted in the first round. I think there's a lot of potential for this Jets team, but it may not come to fruition until 2022. Next up is the AFC North. Now I expect the North to be a two-team race between the Browns and Ravens, and possibly the Steelers as well, but I have the Browns going 12-5 and and in first place. I think the Browns had an amazing draft, which really set them up. They already had a solid roster as it was but adding solid cornerback Greg Newsom the second out of Northwestern. And then Jeremiah owusu Karamoa, the linebacker out of Notre Dame, kind of fell down the boards. And that was kind of a steal for them to continue to build their depth. I'm a big Cleveland Browns fan this year, and I think they're going to have a great season. Coming in right behind is the Baltimore Ravens, and I'm also a pretty big fan of this team as well. The MVP from two years ago, Lamar Jackson, will be back at it again, but I'm really excited to see J.K. Dobbins. I think he could have a true breakout season in his sophomore campaign. In third place is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, a lot of pundits are riding the Steelers off, but I still think they'll be very respectable. Last year, they went 12-4, and but it was a little bit of fool's gold. And this year, they'll probably take a step back record-wise, but I still think they'll be respectable. Mike Tomlin always has solid teams, and this year should be no different. In fourth place, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I think the Bengals will definitely upset some teams, and although they won't make the playoffs, 7-10 is a pretty solid record for them. Joe Burrow will be coming back off of a nasty knee injury, and the offense is looking pretty good as well. T. Higgins... Tyler Boyd and rookie Jamar Chase will be a pretty awesome trio of receivers to watch. The Bengals are definitely a team of the future from 2021 and beyond. The third AFC division I'll go to is the AFC South and coming in in first place is no surprises here. The Tennessee Titans, I have them going 11 and 6. Now, similar to the AFC North, I think it's a two-team race, this time between the Titans and the Colts. And the Colts have had a lot of recent injuries with Quentin Nelson and Carson Wentz, and it's kind of hard to project a timeline with their foot injuries that says between 5 to 12 weeks on their surgeries. And so I just kind of have to make a guesstimate. And their beginning schedule for the Colts isn't too good, and that's why I have the Titans in first place. I think that with Julio Jones added to the mix, Derrick Henry just ran for over 2,000 yards and was a borderline MVP candidate as well. I think the Titans should be in first place with the Colts right behind. In third place, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars going 5-12 as Trevor Lawrence from Clemson enters the fold. And I think the Jaguars, well, they have a lot of work to do, but I think you'll see a lot out of the running game. Travis Etienne, Lawrence's buddy, comes to join them in the backfield with James Robinson, who was a big surprise in Jacksonville last season. And rounding out the AFC South is the Houston Texans, and we already know about them. They're just not going to be a great team. Deshaun Watson, he has a lot of legal troubles going on right now and probably won't be a part of the team's future. The last division in the AFC is the AFC West. And no surprises, the Kansas City Chiefs will be the best team in the AFC. 
in second place is going to be the Los Angeles Chargers. And I could see the Chargers potentially sneaking into the playoffs. But they're always a team that's on the cusp and in a lot of close games, but they always end on the wrong side of those close games. So if they can turn some of those close losses and the close wins, the Chargers could be a double-digit win and get into the playoffs. In third place, I have the Las Vegas Raiders, and they have a lot of potential. They started off hot in 2020 before fading at the end of the season. And the Vegas Raiders, they have a lot of talent as well. Their defense will definitely need to improve. They haven't had a top-notch defense since they last made the playoffs as they led the league in takeaways. And so if they can do something similar to that, the Raiders could be the biggest surprise of 2021. And at the bottom, I have the Denver Broncos going 6-11. Now, like the Raiders, the Broncos have a lot of talent, but it really comes down to the quarterback position. Drew Locke, he hasn't really played particularly well, but I think in the backfield you have two great running backs with rookie Javante Williams and veteran Melvin Gordon could make a dynamic duo to help alleviate some of the stress off of Locke. And they still have great receivers as well as Cortland Sutton is coming back from his tough ACL injury, so maybe the Broncos could surprise as well. It's on to the NFC East, and coming in in first place is the Dallas Cowboys going 8-9. Now the record may be a little bit harsh, but I don't think the Cowboys would complain if they were able to get into the playoffs. Dak Prescott is back and presumably healthy, and hopefully they have a bounce back season from Ezekiel Elliott, their running back, as he didn't have the greatest season. and. Once Prescott went down, teams were able to just tee off on their running game as their other quarterbacks weren't really much of a threat. But I think the Cowboys will really have to work on their defense if they hope on winning a playoff game and making a deep run. As for the number two team, we have the Washington football team also going 8-9, and nine, but due to tiebreakers, they fall out of the division hunt and out of the playoffs as well. Now, I think the football team have the most potential out of all four of these teams in the division. Their defense is rock solid, probably going to be a top three or four defense in the league. And their offense has a lot of great pieces too. Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, and rookie Diami Brown are pretty solid receivers. And of course, Antonio Gibson, their running back, was really awesome last year. I'm a big fan of his. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, we've kind of seen he's very inconsistent throughout his career, and I'm not sure if the football team can count on him for 17 games. Coming in in third place, I have the Philadelphia Eagles, and I don't really expect them to be that great, but Jalen Hurts could be the X-Factor there. And in last place, I have the New York Football Giants, and a lot of people are going to probably hate me for this pick, but I'm just not a big believer in Daniel Jones. I just think that he's too turnover-prone, and despite the Giants having a pretty solid amount of talent, they added Kenny Galladay and Saquon Barkley's coming back on the offensive side of the ball, and then on the defensive side of the ball, James Bradbury is probably the most underrated corner in football. So they do have some talent. They could win as many as eight or nine games, but I'm just not sold on Daniel Jones. And in this league, you need great quarterback play to win football games. We're getting close. It's six out of eight. And the sixth division I'll be talking about is the NFC North division. In first place, I have the Green Bay Packers. Now, we already know about Aaron Rodgers and the offseason drama, but after contract concessions, Rodgers is back for what could be his final season with the team. And if he's back, healthy, and ready to go, the Packers will be in first place. I have them going 11-6. In second place, I have the Minnesota Vikings going 9-8 and and barely missing the playoffs. The Vikings are a pretty solid team, and Kirk Cousins honestly gets too much hate. I think the Vikings will be very solid. uh, Justin Jefferson will be a pretty great receiver once again to go alongside Adam Thielen. And in the backfield, Dalvin Cook, I mean, this offense could be scary. In third place, I have the Chicago Bears going 8-9. Now, the Bears did make the playoffs last year, but I don't expect them to make it this year. But I think there's going to be a lot of potential. Justin Fields will enter the show, and it's only a matter of time before he takes over Andy Dalton's spot. I think that he has a great, great chance of being a solid quarterback in this league and maybe the future of the NFC North. And in last place, we have the Detroit Lions. Now, Jared Goff is entering the fold, replacing Matthew Stafford. But it's clear the Lions are rebuilding. And they have a lot of great pieces with TJ Hawkinson on offense. 
and DeAndre Swift as well. So maybe the Lions could surprise if Jared Goff is above average this year. Next up, it's the NFC South Division, and no surprises here. It's your Super Bowl champion from 2020, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as I have them going 12-5. and five. Now, some people may have them going a little bit higher in record-wise, but they did go 11-5 and five last year, and some complacency could set in after winning the Super Bowl. But with Tom Brady and pretty much returning all of their starters and a couple of key backups as well, the Buccaneers should be well-positioned to win the South again. In second place, I have the New Orleans Saints going 9-8. and eight. Now, I feel like this is a pretty solid, accurate record for them. They could be a little bit better, and it really comes down to Jameis Winston. Drew Brees didn't have the greatest season last year, but he did know the system well and has been on the team for a while, providing veteran leadership. And Jameis Winston, we know his big bugaboo is turning the football over. So if Sean Payton can help Winston continue to work on that, the Saints could be a playoff team again next year. In third place, I have the Carolina Panthers, and their quarterback play is kind of concerning as well. Teddy Bridgewater didn't really live up to expectations, and this year we have Sam Darnold. And Sam Darnold, you know, he's kind of an interesting guy. He didn't really get a fair shake with the New York Jets. And the Panthers have a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, and of course superstar running back Christian McCaffrey. The Panthers could do well with Sam Darnold, but we'll just have to wait and see. And bringing up the rear, we have the Atlanta Falcons. And I just don't really see them doing well this year. Their defense is subpar and Matt Ryan is aging, even though I do think that Kyle Pitts will have a fantastic year. We'll save the best for last. In this division, the NFC West, I have all four teams making the playoffs. Now, coming in in first place is the Los Angeles Rams going 13-4. Now, I fully expect them to finish in first place. They're going all in for this season, and they won't have a first-round draft pick until 2024 after trading for quarterback Matthew Stafford from the Lions in the offseason. I think the Rams are a top three or four team in the NFL and should be surefire Super Bowl contenders if everyone stays healthy. In second place, I have the Arizona Cardinals. Now I do have the Cardinals, 49ers, and Seahawks all making the playoffs and having the exact same record, but due to tiebreakers, the Cardinals will be the second team to make it out of the NFC West. I'm really high on Kyler Murray and with the additions of J.J. Watt and A.J. Green in the offseason. I think the Cardinals are primed for a breakout season after years of missing the playoffs. In third place, I have the San Francisco 49ers also going 10-7 and seven, as previously mentioned. And it doesn't really matter if Jimmy Garoppolo or rookie quarterback Trey Lance gets the start. I think this 49ers team is great on both sides of the ball. They run the football extremely well and whether it's going to be the rookie running back out of Ohio State or it's going to be Raheem Mostert or Jeff Wilson. It doesn't matter. They have so many great running backs and then two quick twitch receivers, Debo Samuel, as well as Brandon Ayuk. I'm a really big fan of this 49ers team if they can stay healthy, and that's the big key for them. And coming in in fourth, but still very respectable, is the Seattle Seahawks. And as long as they have Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, and Tyler Lockett, this will be a playoff team. First up, it's the AFC playoff predictions. And just to recap the seeds, we have the Kansas City Chiefs, the one seed, Buffalo Bills, the two seed, Cleveland Browns, the third seed, the Tennessee Titans, the fourth seed, the Ravens, fifth seed, the Patriots, sixth seed, and finally, the Miami Dolphins as the seventh seed. So as we head into Wild Card Weekend, the first matchup will be the Bills and Dolphins in an AFC East clash. And I have the Bills winning that one. And I expect it to be a close game. Both teams are very familiar with each other. And if there is an upset, it could be this one. Divisional games are always tricky, and we've seen in the past upsets happen here. But I got the Bills getting it done. Then in the next AFC matchup, I have the Cleveland Browns beating the New England Patriots in a tight one as it's going to be rocking as I expect Cleveland to host their first playoff game since 1995. And it will be a successful season if the Patriots make the playoffs this year and potentially a bounce back season for Cam Newton. But I think the Browns are just a much better overall team. And at home, they're going to be motivated and get the win. Then the Titans and Ravens in a postseason rematch. And this time I have the Titans getting their revenge. Get your popcorn ready 
I think it's going to be a pretty high scoring affair. Then in the divisional round, well, I have the Chiefs ending the Titans run as we may see another shootout here, but I'm not going to bet against Patrick Mahomes as they'll go right back to the AFC Championship game. Then I have my first quote-unquote upset as I have the Cleveland Browns upsetting the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo in a narrow win. And I really think what will cost Buffalo here is their subpar rushing attack. Now, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary are decent, but they're not on the caliber of the Browns dynamic duo of Kareem Hunt and, of course, Nick Chubb. Then as we head into the conference championship game, I have a huge surprise here. I'm going bold here in 2021 as the Cleveland Browns, yes, you heard it right, the Cleveland Browns reach their first Super Bowl in franchise history as their magical season continues to Los Angeles for the Super Bowl. Next up, it's the NFC playoff predictions, and we'll start out with the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the seven-seeded Seattle Seahawks, and I'm not going to bet against Tom Brady. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks could pull off the upset. You never know. The Seahawks are traditionally pretty solid in the playoffs, but I'm going to take Tommy Terrific and the Buccaneers. Then, the next matchup, I have the Packers and 49ers, and I have the Packers getting the job done at home. This could be a potential upset here. I really like how the 49ers can run the football in a game that could be really cold, but the Packers have a great running back of their own in Aaron Jones, and I think when the going gets tough, if Rodgers maybe has an off day, they can hand it off to him and do just fine. Then, the next matchup, I have the Cowboys over the Cardinals in a really tight game. It will be Kyler Murray's playoff debut, and I think he'll shine, but he won't get the win, unfortunately, for the Cardinals, as I have the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, who I have projected as the comeback player of the year, getting a three-point win as a game-winning field goal will get Dallas into the divisional round. Speaking of the divisional round, the first matchup here is the Rams and Cowboys, and it's going to be interesting to see. Can Matthew Stafford win his first playoff game? Well, I say yes. Yes, he will. I think the Rams will have the much better team in all facets of the game, and especially on the defensive side of the ball. But I do expect it to be a shootout, and the Cowboys will put up points, but I think the Rams will pull it out. And then the NFC Championship rematch, it's the number two-seeded Buccaneers and the three-seeded Packers. And this one could go either way for me, but based on what I've seen last year and what I expect both teams to look like this year, I think, again, Tom Brady will advance to the NFC Championship game, and this time he'll be at home in warm Tampa Bay, Florida. And so I think that the... Buccaneers get the job done and head to the NFC Championship game for their second consecutive season. And then the conference championship game, ooh, this one's tough. Buccaneers and Rams, I I don't know. After Tampa Bay became the first team to play in their own stadium for the Super Bowl, I think there's a pretty solid chance that the Rams can do it as well. I have this game going to overtime, and in overtime, I think the Buccaneers are going to go back to the Super Bowl. My rule of thumb, don't bet against Tom Brady. It's Super Bowl 56, and this would be quite the intriguing matchup if it happens. We have the defending Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, taking on the Cleveland Browns, who have never played in a Super Bowl. And in SoFi Stadium, the Browns faithful will certainly be making a trip, as they have never made the Super Bowl, that is, until this game. The Browns will definitely be able to rely on their run game here against Tampa Bay. It'll be Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb getting the full load here. But they also have receivers as well that can break the game open. The Buccaneers have a solid defense overall, but it could be Odell Beckham Jr. that will look to steal the show. But on the other side, we have Tampa Bay. They have so many weapons. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Leonard Fournette, and Ronald Jones. And then Antonio Brown as well. So the Buccaneers really have no shortage of weapons for Tom Brady. Now this game for me will be extremely close. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Tom Brady as he wins his eighth Super Bowl, narrowly edging out the Cleveland Browns by the score of 30-27. to The Buccaneers will go back-to-back 
and Tom Brady will be on top of the NFL world once again. Last but not least, let's take a look at some of the NFL awards that I'm projecting. For MVP, I got Josh Allen from the Buffalo Bills. Offensive Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. Defensive Player of the Year, Aaron Donald. Offensive Rookie of the Year. There's a couple options here, but I'm rolling with Justin Fields, a quarterback from Chicago. Then the Defensive Rookie of the Year, J.C. Horn, the cornerback out of Carolina. The Comeback Player of the Year, Dak Prescott. The Coach of the Year, Sean McDermott from the Buffalo Bills. The Fantasy Player of the Year, Derek Henry, once again, just going to dominate everyone. Then the Breakout Offensive Player, I like Javante Williams, the running back out of Denver. I think he'll take over for Melvin Gordon. Then the def- the Breakout Defensive Player, I have Kenneth Murray, the linebacker from the Chargers. The best offense, surprise, surprise, the Kansas City Chiefs. The best defense, maybe a little bit of surprise, but the Cleveland Browns. I like what they did in the offseason to help booster their backups as well. The hater is going to hate, which is an imaginary award where a highly scrutinized player proves people wrong. I have that being Cam Newton of the New England Patriots as he helps the Pats get back to the playoffs. The most improved team, it's going to be the San Francisco 49ers. They'll be healthy and ready to go. Then, the biggest surprise, I have the New England Patriots. The biggest disappointment, I have the New York Giants. The team on the rise, I think it's going to be the Los Angeles Chargers with Justin Herbert. They look really good and could even make the playoffs this year. The biggest spoiler, I have being the Cincinnati Bengals. The game of the year, I have the Buccaneers at the Patriots. That's obviously going to be the game of the year. And then the upset of the year, I have the football team taking down the Chiefs and winning that game by double digits. Follow NFL Updates Express on Instagram for exclusive content.